can we show some love to those who may be streaming online? Give yourselves a round of applause. Today at 10 a.m. and our regular services will conduct every other every Sunday after this one at 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and 6 p.m. in our Sunday school at 10 a.m. And everyone, please remember that while you're breaking through the storms in your life, you'll find healing, you'll find joy and praise right here. So
present to magnify the name of Jesus. Ah, there's nothing like the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Nothing like the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then we can call on what we can't call no other name. We can call on the name of Jesus. And he was fine. Oh, your time and my time to be a blessing to the house of God and to come on, come on, and to invest into the kingdom of God. We certainly cannot be God given no matter how we try. Amen. Why do you say that, Sister C? It's because I sowed the seed into someone's life a few weeks ago. And it was like the next week after we had the women's workshop over at 7100 Bowman Drive, somebody walked up to me and gave me the same thing that I sold in somebody else's life. Yes. Just our physical home, but our children, somebody help me right there. We'll have good health, somebody help me right there. You need more anointing of God, you know, just invest into the, into the kingdom of God. You may not get it back in money, but God certainly knows what you need. Can I get anything right here? And with that being said, the Lord knew that she was a blessing. He knew the assignment that He was going to give to us. And He knew that we would need space. Somebody help me right there. A good worship center to be able for the soul that he has assigned to this ministry to come in. Hallelujah. And because of your generous gifts and your offerings and your sacrificial gifts, we're able to be able to provide a place of worship for those that are lost. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. For this community here. And not only that, when the Lord blessed us, he said, I'm going to give you a little bit more. Say a little bit more. I'm going to give you a little bit more. I'm going to enlarge your territory. I'm going to extend you out to 7100 Bowling Drive. Over there. Somebody's out there. Somebody's coming to the building. Over there. At 7100 Bowling Drive is the Shadows and Lessons Executive Plaza. That is where we house our youth center. And we have some construction going on over there. Amen? Amen. 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 As the Lord leads us, our leader, the visionary of this house, Dr. Darnell Thomas, we are following his lead. Write the vision. And make it plain and make that read it. Anybody read it? Anybody partner with us? I read it. So take it and run with it. So we want our leader to know that we have his back and we're behind him 100%. And that he doesn't have to do this all by himself because we're going to help him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as he's being obedient to God, we're being obedient and we're doing what God has asked us to do. To all my visitors of this morning, you are at www.shadowsandblessings.org. We certainly want to thank you for worshiping with us, being the light of me this morning. We thank you for your generous gifts. Thank you for being with us on this sunrise morning service. We certainly want to thank you for being with us on this sunrise morning service. So, those, if you would go to the front of the website, there is a donate button that you can click on. You can go to the front of the website. There is a donate button that you can click on that will take you to a, a very safe place where you too can be a part of this worship and giving. Shout out the blessings one more time. Let's give our online church and our online business. God bless you. Thank you so much for your contributions. For those of you that have an ATM credit card, to my right, your left, you can join the other seat stores over there where the Shouts of Blessings Finance Department is over there happy and ready to serve you. Let's stand all over the building. Put a smile on your face. Come on, I know it's early. I know it's early. It is like some of you ain't even the devil down right now. But if he got up, We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have been extremely good to us. You have blessed us abundantly and above all that we can ask or even think of. And so, God, we ask you to bless every household that's given on this morning. Bless them 30, 60, and 100 fold. And for those that will 
right to give on this morning, but have nothing to give at all. God, we ask you to bless them, that they may be a seed sower on the next time. Now, God, as we give, as we plant our seeds on this morning, we declare to create as one body, one family, showers of blessings, that we shall never be broke.
our gratitude as an expression of his love toward us. No one can love us.
bringing free peace to the confused mind. Yes, yes. And reveal to us the unravelings of by which man has tainted and all to the word that calls doubt. There's no doubt about it. You being it up. Thank you. And when you got up, you rose up in me. I want to thank you for your Jesus name. Hey God. Amen. Very quickly, I was sitting there and I was trying to figure out how can I do this or express this in a way. And I was not going to speak from this particular passage, but I think it is, it would be prudent of me to go to Isaiah. It's not one of the ones that I was going to use, but while I was sitting there, you know, 53. There was a missionary the other night gave us some statistics on Christianity. I believe she said something to the fact that it was 50 something percent of the people of Christian did not believe in the resurrection. Christians, I'm not talking about sinners, I'm talking about Christians. Did not believe in the resurrection. They believed, you know, that salvation was not the resurrection. And that brings me to Isaiah 53. Who has believed that our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall go up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if we it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did strip him, and, and we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We all, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Yes, yes, yes. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the her shears is done. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Yes. And who shall uh, declare his generation? Yes. For he was cut off out of the land and delivered from the transgression of the people was he stricken. Yes. And he made his grave with the wicked yes. and with the rich in his death. Yes. Because he, he uh, not, because he had done no violence, neither was deceit in his mouth. Yeah. Yet it pleased the Lord yeah. to bruise him. Yeah. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, yeah. and he and it shall see his seed, he shall prolong his day, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Yeah. Now, let's go to Luke. No, yeah, Luke 23. 46. Mm. Yes, 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 but let's go to And Jesus said unto him, Verily I said unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yes. And he was about the sixth hour. Say 12 o'clock. Oh. Mm -hmm. And there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour, say 3 o'clock. Yes. Now, how did it get dark from 12 o'clock noon? And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. That means no longer did the priest have to go to the sacrifice, but God opened it to everybody to go and appeal to the altar. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, now this is where we're going to get into thy hand I commend my spirit. And having said thus, 
he gave up the law. Now let's go to John, 11th chapter, 25th verse. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth that believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. All right, let's talk about, let's look back at Calvary. Now take the telescope away, because it was 2,000 years ago that I only used a microscope yes, yes. to bring it close. Let's just reflect back on Calvary. Maybe see it. It, it, it deserves to be reminded. I shared this here other times that when we reflect Calvary or on Calvary, it's really too sacred to even talk about. When you think about what happened in the gruesomeness of Calvary. When we really ponder over and reflect how we the event that took place is a place that should intensify our commitment toward Him. Because we should dedicate ourselves even more when we ponder over, when we study the fact of what He did, which did occur. I don't care how many people were disputed or downplayed, yeah. it did happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because you should have a greater determination and it should broaden your vision and how you feel about God. Yeah. This is where the most priceless blessing could be ever be bestowed upon anyone. <laughs> I try to find out who would try to take credit really to go down no word to try to explain the reality of this expression of his love. Can anyone, any measure of degree, express so accurately to capture the hearts of mankind? And then I ask, what author would have the nerve to attempt to publish a book to take credit for this explanation? I didn't put art to the dad try to paint on the canvas of history the event, the shared light of this bittersweet love that was expressed yes. by Jesus. Or what composer can even try to speak the keyboards of nature to find the words that sound so perfectly in harmony that echo how God really loved us? Well, I or what a teacher can properly find and articulate so accurately to bring the silence of the bewildered mind and the troubling mind about this happening. Or what preacher can really do real justice in a sermon to convince to bring the devil to his knees to, to try to intensify our idea about the love that they express. What is sad the horrible commentary if it comes to the human race in order for us to be redeemed for a dreadful sin. It required none other than the blood of Jesus, the Son of God, who was flawless, sinless, guiltless. But he was yet holy and righteous and compassionate to suffer this horrible humiliation, this despicable shame, this pathetic misery, painful agony, vulgar blasphemy, this trouble, disgrace, along with a spiteful torture. This was a case beyond any questionable doubt. The death of Jesus on the cross was the only way yeah. that God could show us how much he really loved us. Yeah. But yet and still, mankind continued to disobey yeah. and sin regardless of his condition. Yeah. But yet and still, he didn't understand that he was destined to hell. Time and time again, God proved his mankind that man uh, uh, cannot take credit, none whatsoever, because he had this uncontrollable appetite and this never satisfying appetite for sin. Therefore, carry Calvary became necessary. Because everything else failed, it required something. 
nothing greater than what had already been suffered. It took the cross. Yeah. No sin in every race and nation, in every man, woman, boy, and girl, in every class and creed, in every kind of description, in, the, in every size, shape, in every generation, it was so deplorable. But yet it's still the dispensation of Jesus coming as a redeemer of a contrition to sin. But my brothers and my sisters, the span of time of years that's gone by since they have taken the crucifixion more or less for granted. They have somewhat gone cold and callous about this horrible occurrence in regards to the torture that Jesus suffered them, which was the incarnate of God, the incarnate of God. Suffering for the atonement for the sin of a fallen mankind. Yeah. What is it that would cause us to look back yeah. at the sacred place in history to justify this empathetic, so unconcerned, insensitive, unemotional, heartless, unmoved, unmindful, uncaring? How can we stand aloof as if we are detached from what Jesus did? Yeah. in the spiritual suffering accurately, how can we bring into your mind to help you understand well, this crucifixion, the scourge, which was common during those times. And they treated Jesus as a foreigner. When he owned the world. It's amazing to me how when they crucified Jesus, they had never ever crucified a Roman citizen. But it was always what they called the outsiders. They bring to shame some kind of way to let people know if you have committed any crime, you won't be crucified. But never a Roman citizen. That's so Certain people can get certain penalties, but it don't apply to us. Let's look for a minute. Can I walk down the middle of the night? Just let me borrow your attention for a few more minutes. Let's look where the suffering really begins. Notice here the physical suffering it initially began in the body of the city. Uh, you know, it, it, people have their aspects about what happened. No, no, no. The greatest psychological belief uh, began in the garden. Yeah. It's interesting that Luke, the physician, is the only writer that mentioned and talks about the sweat that fell like drops of blood. He said, then in agony, he prayed the hardest. And yeah. he, his sweat that became like drops of blood, trickling down upon the ground. He noticed that this very rare phenomenon, the hematoterosis, the hematoterosis, the the hematoterosis, that's what they call it, of the blood sweat is filled, it, 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 it fell to the ground, it's documented, and that means a, a person that's under a great deal of emotional stress of this kind, you know, oftentimes produce weakness in the body that causes possible shock. Yes, yes. Just going through the psychological, uh -huh. understanding what he had to go through. Uh -huh. Now, there is a difference now. If you get uh, go go, they 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 they, they don't they, they don't even electrocute you no more. They say that's inhumane, and so they have a very delicate way that they put you to death. Now they just put uh, put some uh, the, the IDs in your hand and let you die slow. But they did not do this to Jesus. Can I talk to you for a few minutes? Jesus across his face. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The trauma that they inflicted upon him after he was born to trial. Yeah. The palace guard blindfolded him, mocking him, taunting him, and then said, Identify who slapped you and who spit on you and struck him in the face. In the morning, early morning, battered and bruised, dehydrated, and exhausted from a sleepless night. 
Jesus is taken across the fortress of Anatolia and to see the government uh, to this here prosecutor in Judah, Pontius Pilate. You are familiar with Pilate acting and attempting to uh, pass the responsibility on Herod. I don't want to turn off the light, uh, but you must understand that had nothing to do with Jesus and his suffering. It would be brutal. Yeah. 
he would be like a sheep led to the slaughter home, and he opened out his mouth. And then it was revealed when it brings, springs up in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the text. We see this crucifixion. Now notice Jesus had faith. And then they untied his hand and allowed him to slump down to the stone pavement, wet with his own blood. They threw a rope across his shoulder and placed a stick in his hand as a scepter, yeah. trying to make him embarrassed and look back, and still needed a crown, which they put thorns, braided them together, put them in a bundle that they used for firewood. Yeah. And now they planted it in the shape of a crown and then they pressed it in the skull. Again, the copious blood, the scalp being one of the most vascular areas of the body. Now after mocking him and striking him across the face, the soldier takes a stick from him and then strikes him again in his head to drive the thorns in his skull. Still, finally they were tired of this statistic sport and then the robe <laughs> was torn from his back. Already having that here, the clock clots of blood of the serpent, of the serpent, serpent, uh, serpent of the wound, right? It removed, it, it's removal, this excruciating, excruciating pain. Now, know that whenever you have something, I put a bad name on, and then you have to wash it, and then you pull the bad name off, it opens up the wound. So, what happened when they put this robe on him? After his blood had dried up, but the bruises wasn't healed. And then they would snatch it and open it up all over again. Can you imagine the agony? And then we have the unmitigated gall to give him a patty cake. And he beat it for you. He should have been you. You are He drives a heavy square, a wrought iron nail through the wrist 
and deep into the wood. Quickly he removes to the other side and repeats the action, careful not to pull the arm tightly. And then he, he don't want him to uh, uh, allow to be stretched out, but he will have some flexations there. Now watch, then his left foot is now pressed backward against the right foot and through the arch of his ankle. I don't know if you ever hit your arch. And then it drives a nail through the arch, leaving his knee moderately flat. Jesus is not crucified. And then they had to slowly, mm-hmm, those up the cross. That's what they make the mistake. That's what they made the mistake. I, I want to get happy right now. That's what they made the mistake. Himself up and he said, It is 